We will continue with the review. We have started from the introduction and today we are going to explore the three criteria to evaluate a system, a spiritual system. Firstly, the first criteria, a full and accurate picture of suffering, the range of suffering. The Buddha does not merely touch the problem of suffering tangentially. Eh? What does tangentially mean? In a way, they only slightly to a matter, peripherally. Yeah. See if there's a synonym. Yeah, the Buddha does not only touch suffering only briefly, but it explores very detailedly. It is the cornerstone of his teaching. The Four Noble Truth starts with the message with acknowledgement that life is inseparably, inseparably tied to something he calls dukkha. Uh, I think someone suggested before, was it Saikyam, that this word, Pali word, often translated as suffering, but it means something deeper than pain and misery. And uh, the word suffering usually doesn't capture the full picture of dukkha. But it is the most often used translation. So what is dukkha? It refers to a basic unsatisfactoriness running through our lives. The lives of all but the, un the, the enlightened. Yeah. The stronger one, this unsatisfactoriness can manifest in sorrow, grief, disappointment, despair. But it also hovers at the edge of our awareness as a fake, unlocalized sense that things are never quite perfect, <laughs> never fully adequate to our explanation of what they should be. What are what is some of the example? Things are never perfect. Uh, a house, maybe. Yeah, sometimes actually this. My house seems actually just for shelter is good enough, but sometimes the wish arises. Oh, I wish I have a bigger house, a bigger kitchen, a fancier washroom, the shower, the water falls like a what? Waterfall. <laughs> I can adjust the temperature of the, uh, the water. Have a shinier shoes. Now, this is what some of the examples that things are never quite perfect. Never fully adequate to our explanation of what they should be. Yeah? Even though I have a lot of you know, a shirt, then there is still a desire to buy a new cloth. So that's the issue. This part of the Dukkha, the Buddha says, is the only real spiritual problem. The other problems, put it aside. The theological question, metaphysical questions. Yeah. Uh, what kind of metaphysical questions? Where does the world come from? Something, uh, something that the Buddha says, matters not tending to liberation. Yeah? Focus on solving your dukkha first. Yeah? Ending of suffering, dukkha and its cessation. Okay. The next one. Yeah, not only does the Buddha explore the generalities, the Buddha goes deeper into different forms that the dukkha takes, the evident and the subtle. Mm -hmm. What we can see, birth, aging, and death. Sickness, accidents, injury, something in hunger and thirst. Yeah, this is the one that we can evidently see for ourselves. In our inner reactions, in the sorrow, anger, frustration, and fear, aroused by painful separations, by unpleasant encounters, failure to get what we want. Huh. 
the even our pleasures, the Buddha says, are not immune from dukkha. <laughs> they give us happiness while it lasts, but they do not last forever. Unfortunately, eventually they must pass away. And when they go, we will feel deprived. Our lives, for the most part, are strung out between the thirst for pleasure and the fear of pain. We pass our days running after the one, running, running away from pain, yeah, from the other, seldom enjoying the peace of contentment. Simple example for me, just a little bit when the weather starts to get hot, the desire for me to find the remote control, beep, turn on the aircon. Yeah. So a little bit of discomfort, run away from the discomfort with the pleasure of cold air from the aircon. Real satisfaction always out of reach, just beyond the next horizon. At the very end, we have to die to give up the identity we spend our whole life building, to leave behind everything and everyone we love. To me, Ajahn Brahmali put this point really well. Like <laughs> he mentioned in one of his talks, how can we be so silly? We build up all of this thing, you know, a big house, relationship, family, wife, husband, have how many kids? Three, four kids. And then we build up all this identity and all material stuff. In the end, in our deathbed, we have to give everything all away. We have to give yeah, what we have spent the whole lifetime of building. And it's so difficult when so difficult when you're in your deathbed and you have to you you're thinking to yourself, you have spent all your life yeah, achieving all of this stuff and you can't bring it with you in your deathbed. Yeah. And yeah, second. Yeah. You finish your first. Yeah, uh, and uh, then you will wonder, yeah, you need that band, and you will get confused. Oh, what is this all for? What is this all about? So I will share the clip with you uh, some, uh, maybe next day, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. It's again. So yesterday I was watching uh, Thai's uh, video. Uh -huh. He is, you know, uh, sharing with us. Somebody asked a question. Where do we go when we die? Yeah, so he's, he's teaching us a, a new perspective. We have to live at the present moment. So actually we are dying every moment, dying and then becoming, dying and becoming. And then he's showing this picture of the candle. He's asking, where, where, where do you think the candle ends? So most of the time we think that the candle you know, ends at the base. And then this whole candle is burning flame from the top. So he says, actually, when we, when we are, when the candle is, is burning, right, it's giving out light and heat. So like we are living, we are also uh, uh, experiencing, you know, uh, giving out uh, love, compassion and all this too. He said he's giving, his teaching, his love and everything to, to his disciple, to, to his friends, to whoever that he come in contact with. So he's saying that actually, when we live our life, we, we try to do wholesome things. We try to build a uh, good relationship. And then actually, you don't have to wait until the, the end of the candle. Then you say that this is the death of the candle and there's no more. He says that, you can see him in his disciple, you know? You can see him uh, even in the prisoners who read his book. Yeah, you can see him everywhere, everywhere. He's there everywhere. So actually he doesn't die. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that is the Buddhist uh, sort of like teaching, non-clinging. That means every moment when you encounter with something, yeah, you just, you know, uh, uh, have to uh, practice, have to give and don't cling to it. And that is uh, very meaningful to me, actually. Yeah, he says that. I, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, probably I can share the clip with uh, myself so that uh, we can share with the rest. Mm. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I've heard that before uh, about we actually die every moment. Yeah, yeah. That's an interesting thought as well. Thanks for sharing, thank you. Yeah, you can share with me the link so I can show the rest. Okay. Anyone else would like to add on? Yeah, I just want to add on to C's um, sharing, which is also from Thich Nhat Hanh. And it was also about death and after, where do you go after you die? I think maybe it's the second segment. And he showed a piece of paper and he say, it, this is right. To have right, you must have left. To have top, you must have bottom. And to leave, to be beyond, you must have death. So there's called interbeing. Like you have good, there's the evil. So everything is just a relativity. There's no absolute. Yeah. So it's very Zen, I think. <laughs> so it's a Zen tradition way of seeing everything, you know. And it's also reminding us, right, everything we see is just a, a very perspective of death, dying. But actually think about the other side. That means it's about life, right? The end of it and the beginning of something else. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Jolene. And yeah, uh, for those of you that don't know, Venerable Teach Nyan Han uh, just passed away uh, recently. Just, uh, uh, it was quite big. And a lot of people share with me that there's a pre documentary yeah, in the, uh, to honor his, his life. So maybe I can share that in the chat if you're interested. Any anyone will have watched it? Oh yeah, okay. Uh paste in the chat. The title is Peace is Every Step. Yeah. Uh we haven't seen Lin Thoi yet, so if she comes back, we can get her to share. Uh, how is it um, like in, yeah, in Vietnam? Yeah, sorry, second. I've, I've watched the documentary. Oh, how is it? Uh, it's very touching, actually. Yeah, he uh, managed to sort of like um, counsel and console and do a retreat for those uh, US army because he was in the US. So, you know, those uh, that killed uh, Vietnamese people uh, during their mission, you know, living in regret and sorrow and not able to forgive themselves and having a lot of trauma after the war. So one thing I wanted to share is he tells them, you know, what have you have done is in the past. Like there's this person who has killed five children, five innocent children. Mm. The reason is because, you know, the, the Vietnamese, they, they uh, ambushed and killed some of his uh, US counterpart and his friends. So they, they, they do a similar ambush there and they want to kill the Vietnamese army, but in the end, the young children, five young children, happened to go there and, and the bomb exploded and killed them right in front of his eyes. You know, young, young innocent children. So he's living in regret for a long, long time until he attends this uh, retreat with the uh, time. 
And he said that you don't look at the past of the death of the children. What you can do now at the present moment, you can go and save the life of the children that are dying now here in hunger, you know, in whatever condition that doesn't allow them to be alive. You can do it now, you know. So yeah, I think he managed to sort of like bring them out from you know the past and tell them that you should do now whatever it is saving life you can do it now you don't have to go back to vietnam and help vietnamese people but the concept is wrong you, you have to you just show love care concern to children here you know anywhere wherever you are your hometown there is desperate people there are there are children that are dying because of you know different types of condition yeah you can do that so yeah, that, that is the takeaway. He's always teaching about living in the present moment. Yeah, don't think about the past, don't think about the future. What you have now is only the present moment. And yeah, that, that's, that's uh, I think it's a really powerful teaching. Mm -hmm. so, teaching. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Sagan. Yeah, and the... The free documentary only until 31st January. So you have two more days to watch if you'd like to. Yes. Okay. Okay, let me quickly continue a little bit on the reading, yeah, on the review. The first criteria touched about Dukkha and how the Dukkha covers a lot of different aspects. And even death, the Buddha says, does not bring us to the end of Dukkha because when life ends in one place, it will take place again. It will spring up again somewhere else as a new body. And then we will go cycle over and over again in this samsara. And it concludes with this sentence. Life in any plane must come to an end. It is impermanent and thus mark with that insecurity, which is the deepest meaning of dukkha. For this reason, one aspiring to the complete end of dukkha cannot rest content with any mundane achievement, with any status, but must win emancipation from the entire unstable world. The next one. What is the causes of suffering? What is the cause of Dukkha? In brief, it is our own craving. Okay, the most basic defilements are greed, aversion, and delusion. Uh, from these three defilements, it emerges all other secondary defilements like conceit, jealousy, Ambition, lethargy, arrogance, and the rest. And from all of these defilements is where our dukkha comes from. There is also one more defilement that gives rise to all the others. One rose which holds them all in place. This one is called ignorance. This line, with this, we discover the breeding ground of Dukkha, ignorance issuing the defilements, the defilements issuing in suffering. As long as this causal metric stands, we are not yet beyond danger. We might still find pleasure and enjoyment, sense, pleasure, social pleasures, but no matter how much pleasure we might experience, no matter how successful we might be at dodging pain, the basic problems remains at the core of our being, and we continue to move within the bounds of Dukkha. So after knowing the suffering, the causes of suffering, then the last one will be how to cut off the causes of suffering. When we know the causes of suffering is ignorance, then 
to eliminate no ignorance, we should have some kind of a counteract. This kind of knowing is called wisdom. The next question will be, how is wisdom to be acquired? Okay. Here it says, wisdom cannot be gained by mere learning, just by gathering facts and accumulating uh, knowledge. But wisdom can be cultivated daily yeah, in your day-to-day -day life. Every second, every moment, you can practice and gain wisdom. Okay, the Buddha calls this path middle way is because we avoid the two extremes. Firstly, the extreme of indulgence in sense pleasures, the first extreme, the one that most of us usually do. The second one, self-mortification, applies more to those ascetics who thinks that by uh, by torturing the body, it can lead to emancipation. Yeah? The Buddha avoids these two extremes. Indulgence in sense pleasure is one extreme. The other extreme is the self mortification yeah? Both are wrong uh, views. And it's summarized here as the first one, low, common, worldly, ignoble, not leading to the goal. The second one, the Buddha described as painful, also in novel, not leading to the group. So what is the among these two extremes? What is the path that transcends these two extremes? It is just this noble eightfold path, which is what we have been reading for the past three months or more. Okay, that is the review of the introduction any questions or comments yen xiao san zhang zhu fan nao yen de zhi hui zhen ming liao pu yen zhui zhang xi xiao zhu shi shi chang xing pu sa dao amitofo here we meet again may we be guided by the buddha dhamma and the sangha sadhu 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 uh, have a non-suffering saturday ahead. Thanks everyone for participating. I'll uh, see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.